Learn the most advanced recruiting techniques. Land the most desirable talent. Launch your company towards massive success. This is the Higher Power Radio Show with Rick Gerard. So you're running lean and scrappy, and then boom, you receive funding. Now what? Today we're discussing the steps to building and scaling headcount in growth mode, making sure that execution and time to fill are aligned. Growth is never by mere chance. It's a result of forces working together. That's a J.C. Penny. There you go. He'd be rolling over in his grave if he saw what they did to his stores. <laughs> Actually, he's not serious, though, right? <laughs> I'm Rick Gerard, and welcome to the Higher Power Radio Show. Our mission is to provide proven tactical solutions to solve your company's toughest hiring challenges. We share insights from top-performing entrepreneurs and industry experts, like our guest today, Mr. Brennan Rogers. He's the co-founder and leading recruiting of WAG Labs. Brennan is currently... Leading recruiting at WAG, which raised over $360 million in venture capital. Wow, super impressive. Uh, most recently, $300 million by SoftBank's Vision Fund. WAG connects pet parents to dog walkers and is currently live in over 110 U.S. cities. Who knew? You guys Uberized pet walking. I love it. That's right. So he also co-founded a social discovery service to meet New People, which grew to over 50 million users in 10 countries and was acquired by IAC in 2014. You're accomplished, man. I, good job. Thank you. Brandon, welcome to the Higher Power Radio Show today. Thank you very much for having me, Rick. Really appreciate it. Uh, absolutely. Today, we're going to cover a couple of things. We're going we're gonna to talk about how to ramp up from zero to hero, and then we're going to talk about some steps to put in place to avoid making hiring mistakes. Sound like fun? Sounds good. Let's do it. All right. So... I'm going to have you pull from some of your experience here because this is really valuable to a lot of our listeners. A lot of our listeners are entrepreneurs and small business leaders. So you guys close our first round of funding. What did you do? So in the, uh, in the early days of, of WAG specifically, when we closed around the first round of funding, we had to obviously scale yeah. uh, engineer headcount. And you know how are we going to do that? Especially when you know, you're going super hard trying to scale the business. You're doing whatever it takes to get to the next level and obviously the next day. So we had to basically put a lot of processes in place and procedures to really be able to scale the headcount and hire the the right people. And I would imagine you had a lot of that in place prior to starting or did you just kind of, all right, now let's execute? It was uh, pretty much just, just execute. Um, <laughs> super, super scrappy. Yeah. Um, you know, everything changes every day, a lot of moving pieces, but everyone's super passionate and, you know, helping out each other, just uh, getting to the next level. So, yeah. And I, I would imagine too, when you're, when you're at that point where you're not sure if you're going to get funding, but you get the funding, I mean, you really kind of have to go into overdrive and then backtrack because you really don't have time to plan for a lot of this stuff. Yeah. I mean, in the early days, it's, you're not thinking about setting up a bunch of recruiting processes and, <laughs> you know, spending and allocating money towards expensive recruiting softwares and stuff of that nature. So it's... Yeah, it's because you have no resources and no you resources. have no, no systems in place, right? Right. Some of the uh, early recruiting tactics was, you know, just telling people about the brand and people seeing us in the area and how cool we connect pet parents to dog walkers. And people were so interested in what we were building and the mission that they actually asked us to join and, you know, it, it organically grew from a recruiting perspective that, that way. And then eventually, you know, we put a lot of really great uh, resources and processes in place to really scale in all different orgs. So, so you're getting your name out there, at least prior to closing your round. Yeah, we, we did a lot of uh, like local marketing. We took it back to square one where a lot of guerrilla style marketing, just really going up to dog parks, just really <laughs> meeting the community and Wow. telling them who we are and, and stuff like that. So, um, you know, a lot of non-scalable tactics, but at the same time, it really was scalable uh, long-term, building a real trusted brand. So did you guys have the foresight to identify people prior to getting the money? Like, okay, these are the first five people we want to hire and we've got them all lined up. Yeah, I mean, we definitely walked a lot of folks, dogs that were very interested in what we were building. And we were very like word of mouth viral, I would say, like people thought it was really cool seeing their dog walked via a live GPS map on their phone. 
and then getting a report card on how the walk went and having that full transparency of when their dog is, is being walked. So a lot of people were very interested in the brand. And this was around 2014 where, you know, Uber, Instacart, Lyft, these types of uh, platforms really taking off and, yeah. and scaling, you know, globally. And you guys started in LA, right? Yep. So we started. Which is in, a great place to start because everybody's got a dog in LA. Right. Yeah. Everyone. There's more service dogs in LA that you know are not service dogs. Right. Yeah. It's uh. There's a there's a lot of dogs. There's uh. The weather is absolutely phenomenal. Um. People are outside. It's a great place to to definitely start a, a pet uh service business for sure. Okay. So what preparation did you guys do before go go mode? Um. In terms of identifying candidates or, or structure or, or really defining out your roles and yeah so we definitely are very um you know this is a technology business so we definitely need to scale engineering headcount and product headcount and design headcount um so you know what we did from a recruiting standpoint what we still do um in the recruiting department at wag is we target a lot of correlated businesses, you know, at least, you know, the consumer facing gig economy. Mm -hmm. um, so we really identified specific, you know, engineers that worked at these businesses. And as the, as the business grew, we identified what our needs were. And that's kind of how we identified what recs we needed to, to open and, and Got fill. But the prep time that you guys put in prior to closing the round of funding, would there be anything that you would do differently now? Or any advice that you would give somebody who's about to close a big round? Like, what should you prep for and yeah, why I, you should prep for it first? I would make sure that you have at least somebody that is identified as the sole recruiter mm -hmm. and that there isn't the hiring managers doing the recruiting. And especially if you're raising, you know, significant capital, having a recruiter that is dedicated as their full-time responsibilities is recruiting, I think that would, you know, at least have somebody in place to set up process and get the ball moving a lot quicker than just having hiring managers and senior leader folks focus on. So you recruiting. think maybe the first hire or the first person or maybe appointing a point person who's responsible for recruiting rather than just a hiring manager or what have you? Yeah, I think like in my startup experience, you don't really hire recruiters until you're like at least 20 to 30, maybe even more folks. So I would maybe identify somebody that is extremely personable, knows the brand inside and out, is, you know, super, super passionate about, about the business and identify that person and put them in a room with engineers and product managers and designers and have intake sessions and have them learn all about um, those specific organizations and put that person in the recruiting okay. seat to begin for sure. Really all you need is somebody to keep a list of maybe the people that you want to hire. Somebody's going to keep everything organized and maybe a contract recruiter if need be, just somebody to get things going once you get that money. Yeah. I think, I think contract recruiting is, is it's, you know, I have a lot of different thoughts on that, but I think that it's, well, it you is, can, you can say them. What are they? <laughs> you can, you can tell us. I think that we um, want to hear. <laughs> yeah. I think that having a contract recruiter or some sort of agency where they can come in and lay down some foundation is is mission critical uh, if you're scaling at a very, very fast pace because to get ramped up on recruiting sometimes can take a while. So I am someone that's for placing some sort of contract recruiter in the business and helping build the foundation. Yeah. Long-term, I, I am not um, someone that you know, as you build out a recruiting function, a recruiting team, and you have sorcerers and you have recruiters and full cycle recruiters, uh, agencies are less needed just because you have sure. the, the manpower. Yeah. But, and uh, you really want to get, as a company, you want to get yourself to that position as quickly as possible because right. agency fees are expensive. I, I'm expensive, right? <laughs> so it just, it, that is what it is. Yeah. And I think um, from a cultural perspective too, you know, having recruiters in the business as full-time employees that are culturally driven, that are passionate about the business, only accelerates culture and in the business itself. Whereas sometimes contract recruiters, agencies, they're not in the trenches with the employees hustling and really building out the business. So they may not be able to 
tell the story as well as somebody that's actually living it. Yeah, um, they're not going to champion your culture as right. well. You know, and, as and well culture, as is, culture is everything. Especially in today's companies. I see a lot of companies that don't put enough stress on the fact that culture is super important. Yeah, I think culture is something that if you don't have it, it's a huge uphill battle to to get, especially as you as the company progresses. So culture is something that from the very beginning, setting the culture and setting the vision and making sure that everyone is aligned and hiring folks that are very mission driven and very culturally driven with your organization is, is super key. <laughs> That's funny because I'm I'm thinking about somebody asked me to do a talk about who best to talk about culture or how to make your culture better than somebody who takes people out of your company. You know, a lot of people teach for, for retention and culture, but they don't, they're not really on the inside and they don't really know why people leave. Like the whole benefits industry is interesting to me because people talk about employee benefits help retain talent. And I don't think that's the case at all because people I recruit never say, unless their benefits are taken away a hundred percent, I've never had anybody say, yeah, I want to leave this company because the benefits, or do I, I want to stay because of the benefits? Because somebody else has the same benefits usually. Right. Yeah. I think like people, they have to be passionate and they have to be driven by what they're building. Oh, yeah. um, and they're going to be spending, you know, majority of their day with these other, um, you know, colleagues and, and building something that, that hopefully they, they really believe in benefits and, and compensation and everything I think is, is one thing, but it's not everything. You guys get the check. Let's say you've got 10 engineering regs that all of a sudden I need to fill. What do I do? Yeah. So, um, especially if you don't have a recruiter, right. Like they, your company was fortunate enough to have you as a recruiter. I but... felt, I felt, yes. I, well, I fell into recruiting just because of how passionate I am for startups. I love speaking with people. I love finding things on the internet. If someone gives me a challenge, I'm really good at finding things and digging up specific information. And I think a lot of my skill sets is very correlated to recruiting. Sure. So I was fortunate that I was put in a position that I could utilize my skills. But what is the most important thing that I would say is if you do receive funding and you don't have recruiters, like I mentioned earlier, is maybe identifying someone in the business that could be the interim recruiter and potentially bringing on a contract recruiter, but setting up processes and a foundation for long-term scale is, is critical because <coughs> spreadsheets and printing out resumes and um, not keeping things organized or having an applicant tracking system is only going to lead you to, you know, it's going to be detrimental and it's not going to be able to scale. And the goal is to build a recruiting organization where you can hire recruiters and basically plug them into your system and have them up and running in no time. Most companies though, don't think about building a recruiting organization up front, which so I think what you're saying is actually kind of unique that you guys were able to do that. But I found that a lot of companies that get funding, I need to hire 10 engineers. I don't want to waste that money on a headcount for a recruiter. There's nothing that's put in place. There's no tracking mechanisms. They reach out to 10 or 12 recruiting firms and say, send me engineers. Right. I think that you can find people that are very, very startup hungry, that are junior to mid-level recruiters that I think that will be at least get the ball rolling and be able to work with contract recruiters. I think that you want to... Well, if you have a junior person, they can do just as good of a job, in my opinion, as an agency would be able to do because, of course, you know, all you have to do is just give them the right tools and resources and a little bit of training. Right. So my, one of my models is be best friends with, with hiring managers, being best friends with hiring managers will only make your recruiting skill sets so much better and hiring a recruiter that's maybe junior to mid. Yeah. You can plug them into um, the business. If they're super passionate about what, what you're building and what the business is building you know, have them speak with hiring managers and, and do a extremely long intake session on the roles that they want to fill. And I'm sure a lot of these, a lot of the employees, especially engineers that are already in the business at that point, they, they should have a referral network or they should be able to tell you more about the, the rec. So you have a way better idea of how to, how to recruit for it. We're talking to Brandon Rogers, the co-founder and lead recruiter over at WAG Labs. If you're just joining us on the live stream or the podcast, you're listening to the Higher Power Radio Show. I'm your host, Rick Gerard, and uh, we're talking about 
actually, we're going to shift into action plan and execution. How do I put an action plan into place and how do I execute? We'll start with action plan. Yeah, I, I think organization is is super key. So say you, you once you have a recruiter or somebody that's leading recruiting for the organization, this person, I recommend, it, you know, really, really understand, you know, what processes are in place. And if there's, if there isn't processes at all, build a foundation, you know, implement an uh, applicant tracking system, you know, obviously uh, develop your sourcing channels, LinkedIn, job boards, Quora, GitHub, Dribble, all these different, these, all these different networks can really provide really great uh, candidates and, and building out your uh, channels to source and, yeah, and doing that intake session with the hiring manager is, is 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 super vital to understanding the role. All right, so you were the recruiter. Do you mind if I dig into kind of like what sure. you did? Is that cool? Sure. So you had to first identify what's needed and then put together descriptions. You need to create messaging. You're responsible for doing all that, correct? Right. Because you didn't have a marketing team at that point either, right? Yeah, so we didn't we had folks that were part of marketing but you know for that specific situation that i would go to them and and see how what would be some of the best messaging i could use yeah. to attract top tier talent so being very cross functional and working cross functionally with other organizations is super key what did you find was the most effective way to extract what the hiring manager really needed for you to write your job descriptions so we actually in our organization, we rely on the hiring managers to write the job descriptions. Okay, but we, you know, help if needed. If they if they are not if they haven't written a job description in some time, we'll provide other you know job descriptions that are out there just to kind of have a a version of what this what uh, those businesses are looking at to try to get a feel and an understanding. Did you ever find that they didn't know? Yeah, I mean, I think scope of role changes definitely day to day or project by project. Yeah. Um, so it's basically iOS engineers, and we need you know mid level iOS engineers, and they need this amount of experience and what they'll be working on. We're not sure yet, but this is this is what we need, and we went out and executed it. Got it. We just need iOS people. Find them. Go. It is the wild, wild west at, in in startups, yeah. especially from day one, even when you get the money on, it is still the wild, wild west True. and having processy in place and having people that can help, uh, set that process up is, is super, super key as the company grows. Where I feel like you guys were lucky is that you had a bit of a following kind of, we're doing something really unique and different And people who are dog lovers are going to be drawn to that. And right. And that's a lot of people. Yeah. We had a very, our brand was very, very attractive to the the eye and what we were doing. So and, you had employer branding kind of right. built and, into it. It made it much easier for you. Correct. And that really helped word of mouth. Did you ever find that you reached out to engineers and didn't have them really super interested? The way we source is we source folks that are in similar stages of a startup or primarily um, at other startups in the area. Sure. And I think that they understand so like, what they're coach. getting. So, I love it. <laughs> po- poaching, <laughs> That's very headhunter of you. Poaching is, uh, is, uh, is something that, you know, is, I, th- I think that's like more of like a harsh word, but like, it's... no, I love it. <laughs> I think it's a fantastic word. <laughs> um, but, uh, I like but, my yeah. eggs that way too. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of our product and engineering is in West Hollywood and, you know, there's other startups like right down the street, you know, yeah. you have Tinder, you have, grinder you have in santa monica you have like headspace and and now bird and snapchat and venice like there's companies that have talent there already that been through the different stages of startup growth so attracting those types of candidates um so you're able to pull the people that maybe weren't entirely satisfied or super happy where they were yeah and i think as companies as companies grow you know like snapchat some people don't want to be employee number 2,850, but people want to be employee number, you know, 12 on the iOS team and they are writing, you know, specific features that go live and they see that in the app and, the, you know, it's it's super cool. You like, may not get that in yeah, you Snapchat. Yeah, like, see that button? I, I did that, yeah. right? And I think that's, I think that's super cool and I think there's a lot of people that are, are very, very driven by that. And I think that's correlated for all different organizations within the business. All right. So first you should plan on kind of having somebody who's 
it's heading up and driving the recruiting side. Um, second, what should somebody invest in upfront? I tend to say, don't waste your money on job boards. How many people did you hire off job board versus the people you went after? I am not sure, but I will say that job boards, there's some job boards that are really good for specific recs. I think that if you are looking for a data scientist that has 15 years experience, you'll, there's some job boards that will not give you those right candidates. Sure. But I think there's job boards that if you're looking to hire a really, really great office manager, I think that uh, sure. I, I think that there's job boards that can fulfill that. The tools that are needed is first and foremost, an applicant tracking system. I learned that the hard way where I was completely on spreadsheets <coughs> and eventually when you start building out really big pipelines and you have multiple recs and then you add another recruiter or another recruiter, uh, organization is key and applicant tracking systems can really help you, you know, A, be organized and B, really pull specific data around time to hire and where different candidates at, at the different stages of uh, well, it'll also, the process. It'll also pull your hiring managers into the process more too, right? right. It keeps them organized. So really great uh, tool for like, you know, getting feedback from hiring managers in a decent amount of time and just getting the process and keeping the, the funnel open and pushing people through the process. So definitely applicant tracking system. LinkedIn has what, hundreds and hundreds of millions of users. Sure. It's a huge a huge place to to recruit from. I, I definitely recommend signing up for like a recruiter seat, maybe not the, the full-blown recruiter seat at first, maybe the recruiter light, really tailor your search and, you know, find like-minded companies that are like yours and, and reach out to folks that are at those like-minded companies. You mentioned a key thing there is, is find like-minded companies that are like yours, right? So take the time to identify companies that are competitive adjacent right? They yeah. don't have to necessarily be in your space. Yeah. I mean, like if you are a fashion company in Los Angeles and you're looking for engineers that are going to build this fashion iOS app, I would go on places like AngelList, Crunchbase, and identify LA yeah. e-commerce fashion companies because there's probably 50 of them or yeah. 100 of them. And, you know, reach out to, to those people that work there and find people that have worked there in the past and, and really go on these other um, platforms to identify yeah, businesses that are in somewhat of the same category. And then cast your net in other areas, Silicon Valley, um, San Francisco, New York. If we're talking LA specific, I mean, it's 70 degrees, 75 degrees most of the year. Like, why would someone not want to move here? I mean, it's a, well, people have roots, right? It's, it's hard to get people to move sometimes. I, I do a lot with relocation sometimes. And yeah, you know, my, my family's here. You know, try to get somebody to move into California from like Texas or something like that. That's, right. that's a brutal one. Yeah. I Unless think, they really want to move. <laughs> relocation may be off topic, but uh, finding someone that works at like a startup in New York City that's like just graduated college, has a couple years experience, doesn't really have the roots. That would be a candidate that I would say has a higher probability of wanting just to pack their bags and leave. All right. What would be three takeaways that you'd like to give our audience that would help them to yeah. you know, succeed once they get the money and not be completely... I would say, out? like, and I said this earlier, is, is really, really be like best friends with the hiring managers. Like consistently give updates consistently give like where are the candidates at in the process just letting them know that like you're so on top of it and that they understand like where their rec is at and i think that's so key so being best friends with your hiring manager uh and i say the second thing is takeaway is get organized right i mean right. you know get yourself an atm system get the right tools there's a lot of companies that try to do this without investing in any tools right and that yeah, should be part of your funding right always be available because candidates are checking their emails. Obviously any like 24 seven people can call you, be available on the weekends, respond to emails on the weekends, like give that candidate experience where you're on top of the candidate with sure. the candidate. Like there's no days off. It's con constantly like if, if the candidate says, Hey, I'm available on Wednesday to come in for an onsite. And no, when is, you're a recruiter, it's and 24 yeah, 7 and this job. is Saturday night. You're responding to that person because you have to close. And that's what it's like. 
th- those are the small things is 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 going to really a give the candidate an amazing experience. <clears throat> Candidates are going to talk about how great you are and how you're on top of it. And B, you're going to fill the wreck sooner than you think. I love it. Yeah. All right, shoot, Brandon, we're just about out of time. Uh, so I want to thank you for your time investment today and welcome you to the Higher Power Radio community. Now, what would be the best way for the members of our community to reach you? Yeah, so um, thank you so much for having me, Rick. It was a blast. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, it was great. This is, this is super cool. Bug guy power. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, find me on LinkedIn, Brendan Rogers, uh, Wag Labs Inc., uh, also on, on Instagram at Brendan P Rogers. Um, and yeah, always available. You can, uh, shoot me a message on LinkedIn constantly on it. And it's and, a fantastic app by the way too. Yeah. It's, it's a, I want to go buy a dog just so I can actually like get it walked. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wag in the app store, uh, W A G on Android and iOS and, uh, also wagwalking.com. You can also use our service. So Perfect. And we'll put a link in our show notes for you. Awesome. Now, you're also going to be speaking at uh, ERE conference coming up in April, April 22nd to the 24th. What day are you speaking? Do you know? I think the second day. Okay. Yeah. 23rd. 23rd. Mm. Okay. That'll be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, Super pumped. You know, it seems like there's a great group of people that are going to be there and super excited to meet other industry-related folks and stuff like that. It's a phenomenal conference. That's what I've heard. Yeah. They put on a great show. Yeah, that's so, that's great. I, and I'm going to be speaking too. Really? Yeah. Nice. Let's go. <laughs> All right. So I want to thank our listening audience for tuning into this week's episode of Higher Power. A quick thanks to our team, our engineer, Paul Roberts, our producers, Andrea Ballin, Shanti Ryle, and Ayla Girard. If you're listening to the podcast, please subscribe, rate, and review, uh, especially review. We want to make sure the content's great for you. So drop us a comment. You can join the uh, Higher Power Radio community at Higher, that's H-I-R-E, Power, P-O-W-E-R, radio.com. Or you can follow us on Facebook at Higher Power Radio or me on Instagram at Rick Gerard one Tune in next week. Our guest is going to be Chris Russell. Chris is the managing director of RecTech Media. He's also a fellow podcast host. I'm your host, Rick Gerard, and you've been listening to the Higher Power Radio Show. Aloha. Thank you for listening to Higher Power with Rick Gerard on OC Talk Radio.